Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to this session. In uh, today's session, we will be looking at the pathology of carcinoma penis. Before I start, I would like to acknowledge gratefully the permission to use images from Robinson Cotran Pathologic Basis of Disease, uh, courtesy of the first author of the book, uh, Dr. Vinay Kumar. And uh, his support for this educational endeavor is also acknowledged. So, today's uh, topic would be discussed under the headings of carcinoma in situ as well as invasive carcinoma. In invasive carcinoma, we will have a look at the pathogenesis, the pathology, the clinical features, the diagnostic tests as well as progression of the disease. Uh, first, we will have a look at the premalignant lesion uh, which is known as penile intraepithelial neoplasia. It is of two types, the undifferentiated and differentiated. Undifferentiated uh, PEIN is associated with human papilloma virus, especially the high risk human papilloma virus type 16. It is uh, seen in two types of uh, uh, clinical pathological conditions that is Bowen's disease and bovinoid papillosis. The differentiated PEIN is usually non-HPV related, is associated with the chronic uh, balanitis as well as Belnitis erotica obliterans. It usually occurs in older individuals and is seen in the foreskin. In Bowen's disease, the penile shaft as well as scrotum is involved. Uh, patients involved are usually older and uh, grossly it is a solitary thickened opaque gray white plaque. Now, if it is red like this, then in that case it is known as erythroplasia of quereth that is multiple solitary shiny red plaques will be seen on the glands or prepuce. Microscopy is characterized by varying degrees of uh, dysplasia and hyperplasia. Hyperplasia meaning increased thickness of the stratified squamous epithelium. Dysplasia is anisonucleosis which could be uh, mild, moderate, severe along with mitotic figures, then loss of architecture as well as uh, loss of polarity, etc. So, its full thickness it is known as carcinoma in situ, in which case you can get bizarre cells, hyperchromasia, numerous mitosis, lack of orderly maturation. But most important aspect of all these features is that even in carcinoma in situ, the basement membrane that is the membrane which demarcates the epidermis from the uh, dermis below is intact. Now, the significance of this is that 10 percent of these patients develop invasive carcinoma. We learnt about erythroplasia of quereth earlier on. Now, this is seen to be red because of dilated uh, vasculature seen just below the involved epidermis as well as an inflammatory infiltrate. Okay. Next is the bovinoid papillosis which differs from Bowen's disease in that it involves younger patients and the lesions are multiple papules which are reddish brown in color. Rarely they may be uh, uh, having an irregular papillary surface wherein it is called as verrucoid. Microscopy however is similar to Bowen's disease. The importance of this feature is that mostly bovinoid papillosis never becomes invasive malignancy whereas Bowen's disease can become erythroplasia of quereth most of the time becomes malignant. Many cases of these bovinoid papillosis may even spontaneously regress. Epidemiology of invasive squamous cell carcinoma 40 to 70 year age group is usually involved and uh, in male malignancy the incidence uh, uh, is uh, uh, 1 percent or less in US whereas, in Asia Africa it is more. Okay, the risk factors uh, depend on whether it is a HPV associated malignancy or non-HPV related. HPV related that is HPV 16 and 18 are implicated in these cases, uh, 50 percent of the tumors are HPV related. So, it could be uh, low income status and long foreskin, non-HPV related or uh, cigarette smoking in some way as well as other carcinogens which may accumulate in the smegma and uh, the uh, area may be uh, constantly being exposed to these carcinogens as well as poor hygiene. Rarely chronic inflammation can also give rise to it as well as balanitis erotica obliterans. Now, circumcision gives protection against uh, uh, carcinoma because of uh, the uh, uh, prevention of uh, smegma getting collected there. Therefore, the carcinogens do not uh, have a constant contact with the uh, 
uh, area in uh, question. Uh, pathogenesis is uh, related to HPV E6 and HPV E7 in case of uh, human papilloma virus related uh, tumors. So, this we have uh, uh, understood earlier in uh, Neoplasia 2 that HPV E6 and E7 are proteins which are important in uh, tumorigenesis. Now, how does this happen? E6 causes P53 inactivation. P53 we know is the apoptotic gene and it is uh, involved in uh, removal of cell which has an abnormal uh, DNA uh, in which case it undergoes apoptosis. Now, here it causes P53 inactivation. So, this uh, genome becomes unstable and therefore, there is increased cell proliferation. It also causes an increase in telomerase, therefore, the cell becomes immortal. HPV E7 causes inactivation of another tumor suppressor gene that is RB gene and here too there is increased cell proliferation because of an unstable genome. It also causes an increase in P16 levels uh, which is uh, by increasing CDKI. Morphologically these tumors uh, characteristically start in the glands or inner surface of the prepuce near coronal sulcus and progressively enlarge or encroach onto the adjoining areas of the penis. Grossly two forms are seen either a flat one or an exophytic lesion. Exophytic lesion can be a fungating cauliflower like mass or a verrucous large mass. The flat uh, lesion is characterized by thickened gray mucosa with fissuring. This latron will ulcerate and uh, in ulcerated cases there is induration at the edges. Microscopically it is uh, characterized by squamous cell carcinoma of varying degrees. So, it could be well differentiated which is G 1, moderately differentiated uh, given the grade G 2 and poorly differentiated given the grade G 3. So, well differentiated malignancies can uh, show nests of cells with uh, abundant uh, eosinophilic cytoplasm and uh, maturation in the form of uh, keratin pearls, horns, then some uh, level of dyskeratosis may be there, necrosis is not often seen. Poorly differentiated malignancies uh, may not show any keratinization at all, actually uh, IHC with uh, may be uh, P40 or P63 uh, may be required to call it uh, squamous in origin and moderately differentiated will show features in between these two with uh, little bit of uh, dyskeratosis seen. Another variant of these tumors uh, that is squamous cell carcinoma is a uh, malignancy with excellent prognosis because it is locally invasive and has a low malignant potential and that is known as verrucous carcinoma. Verrucous because it is an exophytic uh, tumor with multiple projections on top and this has a, a broad pushing border within the dermis and these pushing borders are bulbous and contain keratin pearls within them. The atypia seen is minimal. Only if it is minimal atypia, we call it verrucous carcinoma. If it is not minimal, moderate to uh, high degree of atypia seen in an otherwise verrucoid lesion, then we call it a, a verrucous type of well differentiated squamous cell carcinoma. Other tumors are there as we will see now. So, what is the classification of squamous cell carcinoma of the penis? Uh, WHO 2016 has given uh, two broad categories that is HPV related and non HPV related. Amongst HPV related are the basaloid, the papillary basaloid, warty, warty basaloid, clear cell, lymphoepithelioma like and others. And amongst non HPV related are the squamous cell carcinoma usual type which I have explained just now pseudo hyperplastic where it looks exactly like hyperplasia and it is with difficulty that we can make out it is malignant. Then pseudo glandular where uh, the nests of cells have uh, acantholysis or uh, the cells in the center become discohesive. So, as a result it appears like a gland, but actually it is not a gland. So, that is why it is known as pseudo glandular. Then what I had mentioned earlier a verrucous type of uh, lesion then carcinoma cuniculatum, papillary squamous cell carcinoma, then carcinoma uh, with which has both um, your adenocarcinoma features and squamous cell carcinoma features known as adenosquamous carcinoma, carcinoma with a predominant spindle cell component known as sarcomatoid carcinoma, 
for which uh, only immunohistochemistry with P40P63 can help uh, to uh, say whether it is a sarcoma or whether it is a spindle cell variant or a sarcomatoid variant of squamous cell carcinoma and the last one is mixed squamous cell carcinoma. So, uh, this is uh, your uh, clear cell type of uh, HPV related uh, squamous cell carcinoma, the cells are quite clear. Actually, in areas there, there is even uh, perinuclear coilocytosis. In non HPV related, this is the classical variant or the usual type, this is well differentiated actually, and you can make out the anisonucleosis, the hyperchromasia, then your uh, a lot of keratin pearls. Uh, in areas, there is even dyskeratosis. And this is what I mentioned earlier, the pseudoglandular pattern that is discohesiveness of the cells in the center. So, it appears uh, like a gland, actually these are the periphery of the tumor nests which are still cohesive. Clinically, uh, these patients present with a slowly growing locally invasive tumor, it takes months actually. Early uh, in the course of the disease, uh, these are painless, but may have bleeding. Later on, it becomes painful when underlying structures are involved and they may ulcerate. 50 percent of the patients present with the nodal metastasis. Early on in the disease, it is inguinal. Later on, it goes into the pelvic and iliac nodes also. Advanced courses are rare, but uh, these are usually uh, seen with widespread distant metastasis. Okay. Prognostic factors uh, are uh, pathological stage uh, as per the PTNM staging. Then uh, the histology as I have already mentioned that is uh, the grade, different grades, grade 1, grade 2, grade 3 as well as types. Now, some of these types are associated with excellent prognosis like verrucous carcinoma. Then some are associated with poor prognosis. For example, the basaloid as well as the pseudoglandular and sarcomatoid. Basaloid uh, squamous cell carcinomas are known to be aggressive and quite destructive. Perineural invasion, lymphovascular invasion are other factors which play a big role in uh, these uh, tumors. And uh, these tumors treatment wise uh, the early lesions especially the carcinoma in situ or penile uh, intraepithelial neoplasia as well as grade 0 and 1 tumors are treated by uh, circumcision if it involves uh, the prepuce or else by local excision, maybe even wide local excision. Then on it depends on what stage the tumor is and how much involvement of the underlying structures are there. In that uh, uh, penectomy is done usually partial or total along with other structures if it is a higher stage. So, with that we come to the end of this session. But before we conclude a little bit about what we learned today. So, to summarize uh, penile carcinoma is a slow growing locally invasive malignancy common in areas with the poor genital hygiene. Two types are seen that is HPV related and non HPV related. Bowen's disease and bovenoid papillosis are the precursor lesion. They occur usually on the glands shaft as flat or exophytic lesion. Microscopically squamous cell carcinoma is seen, uh, several histological variants are seen uh, which are different in uh, HPV related and non HPV related. Some of these are associated with excellent prognosis like verrucous carcinoma and some with poor prognosis like basaloid squamous cell carcinoma or sarcomatoid squamous cell carcinoma or even your pseudoglandular variant of squamous cell carcinoma. Prognosis depends again on the histological type as I mentioned earlier, staging, invasion and the grade of the tumor. Verrucous carcinoma is one variant which has excellent prognosis. It is a well defined exophytic lesion which is non HPV related and it is rarely metastasizing but locally aggressive. Thank you so much. So, with this we come to the end of this session. Thank you for a patient hearing.